Hello YouTube, Validation Boy here. So, I've been getting a lot of harassment from a certain troll out there who's obviously a Closet Validation Boy fan, and they've got this delusion that I couldn't possibly have been producing Flat Earth oriented material prior to 2015 because that's when they only first heard about it. Funny thing is, I never really gave a shit about making videos and always considered the written word to be a much more potent mechanism for inciting change in the world around me. Damn was I wrong. Now, my intentions in making this video are not an attempt to show that I did Flat Earth first, because I didn't. As far as I'm concerned, Eric Dubé and CDF, Conspiracy Dudes Fury, are the first to talk Flat Earth in the modern era, and those two guys are who I was getting 100% of my inspiration from. Regardless of all that bullshit, just to shut up my little private message stalker, I'm going to read my debate forum post concerning Flat Earth, which dates all the way back to December 29th, 2013, and it's called Science Equals Philosophical Malpractice, and it reads as follows. Science equals philosophical malpractice. Centuries ago, shadowy figures of vague historical myth made a bold paradigm-shifting declaration which would forever alter the course of human history. They claimed man's perception of the earth had been greatly flawed up until that point. We were then commanded to dismiss all logic, forget all common sense, toss aside painstaking centuries of exploratory mapping, and adopt into practice the extremely illogical paradigm of a spherical earth. There was, of course, zero proof validating this radically counterintuitive new presumption. However, a copious amount of deranged speculation had already taken place amongst just the right people in just the right places and presto, the earth was declared a sphere. The practical implications of mankind adopting such a ridiculous model of the earth were numerous. Take a moment to contemplate some of the schemes that the lords of this world are up to today and you'll quickly understand why this illusory foundational paradigm was originally put into place. It's no secret that the creation of a one world government is the primary objective of the UN and for that matter all major societal institutions. With the emergence of the spherical model, it seems as though the ancient predecessors of our current leadership had finally found the exact mechanism they'd needed to push the world further down the predetermined path they were planning. Most ironically, the UN flag itself bears the image of a flat earth. Though Antarctica seems as if it is nowhere to be found on the baby blue visage of their flag, it indeed does appear in the form of wreaths surrounding the entire layout. On ancient maps, these were not wreaths but were instead representations of a legendary ice wall no explorer could ever pass. This ice wall was often described as stretched about, even unto the four corners of the earth. Integrated into the comprehensive astrological flat earth map that is the UN flag, there are circles which many believe infer a bullseye target. Though this humorous inference may possess its own bit of truth, these circles were originally intended to represent the sun's path over the earth through the changing seasons. They are the tropics of Capricorn and Cancer. Long ago, the architects of civilization knew that if they could get the people behind the mythology of a spherical earth, the momentum of such a shift in perception could also be used to bring about a new global culture, which they could easily guide and manipulate. This led us to the collectivist system of caste-based cerebral self-limitation we all enjoy today. That being said, where do you think the UN comes from? Let me clue you in. It was created by the elite bloodlines for the elite bloodlines. Only the select genetic lineage of the gods are allowed in this club. As we already know, the layout of their sacred temple is purely astrotheological. These people worship a very specific deity, and their zealotry is quite apparent. The widely accepted idea that everyone is now inescapably codependent due to the supposed spherical shape of our planet does wonders for their monstrous agenda of perception manipulation. Don't forget, public school is free for a reason, and if you're a good enough little parrot, they'll even pay your way through college. Despite being the flagrant insult to intelligence that it is, the mythological sphericity of our planet has taken hold of humanity's collective consciousness with frightful ease. Until very recently in history, all sailors used a flat map when navigating the seas. That's because the globe has never made any practical sense whatsoever. These days, GPS is the preferred tool of the trade, however, we can still only speculate as to where their global positioning signals really come from. Most likely ground-based towers, just like everything else. The magnetic north pole upon which our systems rely is plopped right in the center of the disk we dwell atop. Contemplate that for a moment. The fairy tale fantasy of a round planet has been perpetuated by academia since its introduction, regardless of the fact that the Earth's sphericity has never been indisputably proven. Answer me this, will you ever cross Antarctica? I bet you won't. Will you ever ascend into space? I bet you won't. Will you ever see the Earth's curvature with your own eyes? Nobody ever has. Don't worry about it though. Our government's got all that covered. The same government that covered up WMDs, the JFK assassination, Benghazi, Iran-Contra, Fast and Furious, Waco, Ruby Ridge. You've been shown with events such as these that you are now expected to believe every ounce of crap you are ever fed. Can you even say for sure that their deceptions would be limited to just those marginal evils? 
It's looking more and more as though all those old random instances of corruption were little more than the tip of an iceberg that's deeper than any abyss most would ever want to explore. Sadly, they already have you right where they want you. In order for you to escape the restraints of this particularly illogical incoherency and commonly accepted reality, you'll need to begin entertaining ideas you've spent a lifetime ignorantly and erroneously dismissing. A wise man once said, the longer you live, the more questions you should have. As an honest intellectual, I'm compelled to ask, when you look at the moon or the sun, do you see a sphere? No, you see a disc. You double speak yourself into believing you see a sphere. To reinforce the nonsensical explanations NASA has offered us concerning the essence of our cosmic reality, we've been inundated with imagery it seems only a lobotomized ape could believe. Taking a closer look back at some of NASA's more infamous photographic works of art, we can only laugh at the multitudes of inconsistencies they've propagated upon us over the years concerning the physical properties of space. Here are a few more fun questions we know NASA will never be able to answer. Can a human eye see starlight in space or not? Can a camera manufactured by humans capture starlight in space or not? Can a camera even function in what you claim is the frigid death vacuum of space or not? We supposedly possess aircraft capable of safely delivering sensitive equipment and human beings to the moon, yet somehow there's never been an in-atmosphere flight directly over Antarctica, due to the wild conjecture that airplane fuel would freeze in those conditions. Of course, governments claim they've set up bases at the South Pole, providing images and all. Can this propaganda be trusted? Logic and a long history of photographic deception say no. The first images NASA ever gave the world of Cold War America's monumental moon landing were nothing more than grainy, slowed-down studio shots they hazily blit past a select few people at a closed press conference. An outdated projector machine was used to flash the images onto a badly worn-out screen in exclusively black and white. TV news cameras were only allowed to film this heavily edited and carefully blurred footage from a very far distance. The press had only these crappy images to offer an eagerly awaiting worldwide herd of foolishly hope-filled viewers. On top of all that, NASA's first-ever lunar landing was paradoxically captured on film from, get this, the surface of the moon. Then, the exact same thing happened on Mars. What are the odds? People actually bought these ridiculous lies. Some even swore they witnessed the lunar landing live when they'd actually only listened to the proceedings taking place on the radio. So what's it gonna be, NASA? Will you ever come clean? If the Hubble telescope can see 14 billion light years into space, why can't NASA broadcast a live shot of the American flag on the moon? They could zoom right in. But no, turns out there is no flag on the moon. Even if a broadcast of this nature were to occur, one could only logically assume that the images shown would be entirely man-made, given the agency's long legacy of craftily manufactured photographs propaganda. And on the subject of light years, who the hell ever decided we should measure distances in the scale of time anyways? And they would say, well, because light years are a measurement calculated upon the amount of time it takes for light to travel a distance of... Duh, duh, duh. Well, if that's the case, then the concept of light years is nothing more than agenda-pushing conjecture and dangerously hyperbolic postulation. Einstein's unproven theory of relativity inconveniently states that all light is affected by the great mythical paradox big science calls gravity. If we throw the monkey wrench of gravity into the big equation, we must then assume that there are quadrants billions of gravitational objects, each with their own relative time, skewing every measurement of space we've ever made. Unaddressed inconsistencies such as these are what keep all of NASA's unproven presumptions concerning space planted firmly under the category of theory to this day. Their attempts to sweep these unmentionables under the proverbial academic rug have only exposed the larger conundrums plaguing their widely accepted fallacies. After decades of intellectually dishonest hocus-pocus, it's simply too late for big science to go back on their word. Instead, they will forever continue to snowball untruths atop the faulty pillars of their hugely flawed hypotheses. Science is nothing more than philosophical malpractice. They've convinced you of your global responsibility and condemned you to an invisible yet inescapable prison of manipulated perception. All right, dickhead. There's VB talking FE in 2013. Like I said, I don't give a damn about getting credit, but if you want to call me a liar, I'm going to shove the truth right in your fucking face. I did not want to have to do this, guys, but thank you very much for listening, and keep it real. Keep it fucking flat.